Well, good day and welcome back to my shop. Uh, I haven't put up a video for a while and the reason for that is that uh, I just got back from an overseas holiday. Some of the, uh, the most impressive things that I saw while I was on this overseas trip, uh, firstly was standing on the start finish line of the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada. Being a massive Formula One fan, being able to look down at my feet and see the words Salute Shields written on the uh, tarmac on that start finish line was one of the things on my bucket list. And uh, of course, uh, Gilles Villeneuve did not drive for Red Bull. Uh, if he did, I'm sure he would have been very successful there too. And of course, come on, Daniel. Uh, the other thing that uh, was on one of my lists was to uh, visit the Royal Observatory in Greenwich near London and uh, I was able to stand my feet astride the Meridian Line which is apparently one of the, the things that uh, all tourists want to do when they get there and uh, I was also able to uh, look inside one of their museums and see John Harrison's H3 clock, which of course was the famous ocean-going chronometer, uh, which made uh, navigation at sea uh, accurate and predictable. And uh, uh, to see that clock running and in pristine condition uh, was one, once again one of those really impressive things. Oh, and I saw a bunch of mountains and buildings and rivers and stuff as well. However, um, the reason we're here today is to talk about this tool. Now, now this is a called a, a rib nut tool uh, for inserting threaded uh, fasteners into thin material. Uh, these things are look like that. Uh, these are four millimeter metric uh, rib nuts, also sometimes called nut certs. And uh, they come in a range of materials, uh, aluminium, stainless steel, uh, I think also in model metal. And they have uh, the threaded portion inside the narrow end, a flange on top, and there's a, a knurled section which is designed to grip into the material that you're fitting it into. Now the, uh, the tool used to fit these can be of various types. Uh, the one that I looked at and I was thinking about purchasing was a type that had a ratchet handle and it was just simply cranked up hard and that would pull the nut set or the rib nut up against a, a face and in doing that it would um, deform the, the barrel end of the, the rib nut. Uh, the one that I was looking at buying was around about $250, which I thought was a bit excessive given what it was. Uh, and of course it had an integrated ratchet handle in it. Uh, this is just a cheap uh, ratchet spanner that I bought to do the job. The other type that's uh, commonly available is uh, similar to this, uh, the type that you use for fitting pop rivets or blind rivets. Uh, these are way, way cheaper, uh, but when I had a look at them, I'm pretty sure you'd need to be built like Arnold Schwarzenegger in, all, in order to be able to pull these uh, rib nuts up tight and form the flange. Uh, so I declined to buy one of those. The other type is the pneumatic type. Once again, this is for blind rivets. Uh, the, the version you can buy of fitting rib nuts is probably just a beefed up version of this. Um, the disadvantage with this is that you of course got to have air on hand to be able to use it and once again I wasn't entirely convinced that that would uh, set the larger diameter rib nuts. So the, the tool that I built, uh, I drew it up on my CAD program as I usually do just to ensure that everything fitted to check the, uh, the tolerances and it also gave me a set of um, working drawings to machine the parts to. The, internal structure of the, the tool is just simply a, a threaded spindle. Now these are just M12 high tensile steel bolts which I've reprofiled. The uh, section on the end is, uh, this one is a 3mm but I've made them in 4, 5 and 6mm designations as well. And there's a reduced shoulder here which fits into a thrust washer or thrust bearing. Now I bought these online and stupidly I 
thought I was buying a single bearing and I needed four of them so I ended up buying four packets of ten. Uh, they weren't expensive but now I've got a big oversupply. The idea of the, uh, the thrust bearing is that it just simply provides less friction because when you're tightening this, this whole assembly up um, the bottom of the, the bolt tends to uh, bind against this um, what would you call it? It's, it's a bush really that fits into the end of the tool. So the um, thrust washer just simply gives you a reasonably friction free fit on the inside of the tool. So to make this work I needed four of these in each of the, the thread classifications that I needed. I needed the uh, thrust washers, um, I, like I say, bought, thought I was buying four. And you need four of these caps. And uh, these have been knurled uh, with a just an ordinary straight cut knurl. I'll show you how, how that's done on the lathe. But the idea of this is that it just simply gives some grip between the face of the, the rib nut and the face of the tool to stop it from rotating. So the, the rib nut looks like that when it's formed. This one's just in some aluminium sheet and that's a, an M4 cap screw that's threaded into that. So these work really well in very thin material, something that's too thin to be able to fit a thread to. And uh, of course it works in sheet materials like plastic and fiberglass and composite boards and so on. The um, assembly, uh, in this case I'm just going to fit one of these rib nuts to a piece of uh, light wall uh, RHS tubing. The hole size that you drill is fairly critical. Uh, I don't have the correct size drill bit. I end up using a uh, number one uh, drill bit uh, which is just slightly the wrong size. Uh, the idea is that the rib nut should be able to be hammered in or press fitted in. Uh, this one just sort of slides in but it still works. So the assembly is you thread the rib nut onto the end of the threaded section of the spindle, that's a 6mm one, insert that into the hole and hold it up tight and then just simply tighten and you should be able to feel that getting tighter as you go and when you look on the inside you'll see a, a flange being formed. I'll show this in close up. Now it is possible to over tighten them and strip the thread, especially on the aluminium ones. And that one's sort of formed up fairly well. And then just simply unscrew it. I've seen these uh, made uh, in very, very simple form. Some of them are just basically a lash up made from a uh, threaded bolt and a spanner and a couple of washers. And although they work, um, this one, eh, once again, it's one of those things where I just probably over engineer it uh, to make it look good. And if you um, if you look closely, you can see the, uh, the pattern formed by the knurled face of the, the cap in the, the flange of that rib nut, which I don't know if that's a problem. You could polish it off if it worried you. And uh, the reason I'm showing you this tool is that uh, it requires a spanner in order to be able to take this cap off and fit the, the different diameters of, uh, of spindle that you've made. Now normally I would make a spanner uh, at the same time I'm making this cap so I can drill the pair of holes uh, on both the cap and the spanner at the same time so I know they're going to fit. This one's actually for a, another tool that I made so it's a, it's a one-off. And the problem with this is that every time you make a new tool you've got to make a new spanner. And what I was hoping to do was to uh, design a thing called a pin wrench, an adjustable pin wrench, which allows you to fit the pins at any spacing that you like and also to fit different diameter pins. So 
The next video up after this one is going to be the making of that tool. Now I didn't make this tool, the rib nut tool on camera. Uh, it was just something that I made up um, on the spur of the moment. But the next tool, the, uh, the, the pin branch, I'm going to do on camera to show you how that's done. And uh, if you're interested in making one of these, remember they, they are really simple to make. Uh, this particular one is made from a high carbon steel body, chrome plated bar, but it is a high carbon steel, very high tensile. So the body of the tool is made from that, the cap made from the same material, the threaded uh, spindle is made from a high tensile M12 bolt. This handle here is just mild steel and I kept that deliberately short. Uh, so that you could fit it inside a closed container or inside a, um, a box or something like that. It doesn't appear to be a problem. Um, having that short reach on the handle, it still works fine. And, uh, I don't know, it works well. So, for now, uh, thanks for watching.